this video we are going to learn some intuition about how boosting algorithms work. Proceed with opening Jupyter Notebook, going into basics directory and opening the first file, boosting wisdom of the crowd theory. Okay, so basically what is boosting all about? First it's an algorithm introduced in 1996 by Freud and Shafir. Basically it works in the way that we are training many weak classifiers to reweighted versions of the training data. For example, we are taking all training samples fitting the first classifier. Then each training sample is assigned a weight telling whether it was classified good or wrong. Then we are training another classifier based on the reweighted sample then another and another. Each classifier is also assigned a score. When we hit a certain number of classifiers, we are averaging the results into a final classifier. It's good to know that the algorithm fits the classifiers in a stage-wise ways. That means we are calculating optimal parameters for the next classifier, holding fixed what was already calculated. That might seem like a limitation, but turns out it's a very reasonable way of regularizing the model. Okay, why we are fitting weak classifier? What is it? Basically, a weak classifier is an algorithm doing slightly better than random guessing. We can use every algorithm as a base for boosting, but trees, or more precisely decision trees, have some nice properties that makes them perfect candidates. For example, they are really computationally scalable, they handle missing values, they are robust to outliers, they do not require feature scaling, can deal with irrelevant inputs, if small they are also interpretable and can handle both quantitative and qualitative predictors. There are also some disadvantages, for example they can't extract linear combination of features and generally have small predictive powers meaning they are introducing some high variance. But boosting technique has this really nice feature that can try to reduce this variance by averaging many different trees. Okay, let's proceed to some common algorithms. Every machine learning training objective consists of two parts, a loss function and a regularization. The loss function controls the predictive power of an algorithm and regularization controls its simplicity. A very common implementation of boosting is called AdaBoost. It's a shortcut from adaptive boosting. Let's try to understand how it works. Let's assume that we are dealing with binary classification problem. The possible outputs from our problem are either minus one or one. We are having n training samples and we are going to feed m trees. In the first step, we are assigning equal weight to each instance. Then, in the second step, for each tree from 1 to m, we are fitting a classifier taking, the, taking into consideration the instance weights. We are computing the obtained error, then we are computing a coefficient for each tree telling how good it is, and finally updating each instance weight. In the last step, we are creating the final classifier output, taking into consideration all trees and their coefficients. We can also go one step further and realize that we can take advantage of the fact that the loss function can be represented with a form suitable for optimization. This creates a class of general boosting algorithms named simply GBM, Generalized Boosted Models. A popular implementation of GBM is gradient boosted tree. It uses decision tree as an estimator and can work with different loss function solving various problems such as regression, classification, risk modeling, evaluated gradient and approximated with a simple tree. A special case of gradient boosted tree is also other boost, which uses exponential loss function. The problem with gradient boosted trees is that they don't take regularization issues very seriously. Sometimes they allow to grow many very similar trees that can also be sometimes quite bushy. Although they try to approach this problem 
by adding some regularization parameters. For example, we can control the tree structure, we can control learning rate, we can reduce variance by introducing some randomness. But these things can be improved even more. Here, XGBoost really helps. XGBoost, which is a short name for extreme gradient boosting, is simply a more regularized version of gradient boosted trees. It was developed by Tianqi Chen first in C++, but later on there were interfaces enabled for Python or Julia. It is mainly used for winning Kaggle competitions. The main advantage is, is that there is a good bias variance trade-off practically out of the box. It's running very fast and the package is constantly evolving. The author is willing to accept many pull requests from the GitHub community. Right here you can see general formula for objective function. It consists of a loss function plus regularization term. In XGBoost, the regularization term is expressed with this formula. Basically, the first part is responsible for controlling the overall number of created leaves, and the second term watches over their scores. If you are interested in more detailed mathematical explanation, please visit these linked pages.